iPadOS 17 public beta is here, so that means I can finally show you all the features that I'm excited about. Like every year, I'm going to have a full walkthrough on the iPadOS update in the fall when the update is officially out. Right now, it's just in a public beta preview. So if you want to see that, be sure to subscribe. This video is sponsored by Paperlike. Let's get into it. The top feature that I'm excited about isn't even a new feature, but it's a change to an existing one, and that's Stage Manager. There are some key changes to Stage Manager this year that make it really good, and this is coming from the guy that did not like Stage Manager. I'm very excited about this. When in Stage Manager, windows are more flexible when it comes to both resizing them and moving them around. In iPadOS 16, they had predefined points. So they only had a certain amount of uh, sizes that you could resize those windows to and only certain positions on the iPad that they could be moved to as well. This was a very on-rail system with very few predefined points. Now in iPadOS 17, it's still an on-rail system, meaning there are still those predefined points, but there's a lot more of them, making it a so much more flexible. Window resizing is a lot more free and almost feels completely resizable. This makes getting windows to the right size even nicer. Windows can now effectively be placed anywhere on the iPad. Now, if you do put a window close to a corner or the center of the iPad, it will snap to that position, which I actually kind of like. This gives you more freedom when it comes to getting windows set up in the position that you want. Honestly, I'm happy with this. This works for me. I'm able to resize windows to the positions that I want them to be, and I'm able to move them around as well into the spots that I want them to be. Uh, I don't feel like I'm fighting those anymore. This update makes the style of window management a lot more usable. With iPadOS 17, background windows are a lot less aggressive about moving around. This means you can stack windows on top of each other without the background window shifting dramatically to the other side. If you do put a window on top of another window, the background window does shift to stick out just a little bit. Now, this makes sense because if you think about it in tablet mode, you don't have a cursor or keyboard shortcuts to cycle through uh, the, the windows that are on the screen or in that stage. You have to be able to tap on a window to bring it to the forefront. So I'm okay with it shifting a little bit, but I really appreciate that it's not shifting dramatically and I'm not having to fight the system to get windows to be in the spot that I want them to be. With these three changes, you can now better position windows where you want and the size that you want. It just, it feels a lot more free and a lot, lot less user hostile. I also got one of my most requested features with Stage Manager, the ability to add an app to a current stage without having to do the whole drag and drop dance. You can now shift click on an app that's in the dock, the recent strip, app library, and even spotlight to add it to the current stage. Can I get a big finally? I am so excited about this. This makes building and managing stages so much quicker now. There's so much less friction when it comes to setting up your computer to do work. If you're in tablet mode, you can actually hold down on the current window, like move it around a little bit to make sure you know you have it selected, and then tap another app or stage to add it to that stage that you're selecting. This makes shifting windows around in tablet mode a lot faster as well. The iPad also got support for external webcams and webcams that are built into monitors like the studio display. This makes video calls a lot nicer. No more having the iPad down low, looking up your nose and everyone seeing your nose hairs. It's, you know, you can use whatever webcam on a tripod or whatever you want, anytime you want. It's really nice. And it doesn't have to just be with the external monitor. You can just plug a webcam into the iPad if you wish. This is also going to allow apps to use external cameras and let the iPad act as a capture device. Now, I know none of these changes sound like a big deal on paper. They may sound very minor changes to you, but the reality is using Stage Manager with these changes is dramatically better. I was somebody that did not like Stage Manager in iPadOS 16. I saw a lot of issues with it. It felt very user hostile. I felt like I was spending most of my time fighting it. With iPadOS 17, I don't feel that way anymore. I feel like it's working with me rather than against me. I can quickly build stages by shift clicking apps into the current stage that I want them to be. 
I can move windows around into the position that I want them to be, and I can resize windows into the spot that I want them to be. I now feel like I can sit down and get my work done with Stage Manager enabled instead of having to fight it and mess around with getting windows and apps and stuff into the right spot. For the first time in a long time, I feel very positive about the direction that the iPad is going in. This coupled with Final Cut and Logic recently coming to the iPad and some other changes that we'll talk about in iPadOS 17 throughout the summer, I'm very happy about the direction of the iPad. Now, there are, of course, things that I still want to see come to Stage Manager. I do not feel Stage Manager is feature complete by any sense. But these were the big things that I was complaining about and others as well. Not just me, but there were other people complaining about it as well. And getting these, you know, checked off on the to-do list really makes a big deal as far as using Stage Manager goes. This video is sponsored by Paperlike. Paperlike is one of my favorite iPad accessories. I have it on both of my iPads. This is a matte screen protector that gives a textured feeling when you're using the Apple Pencil. This way you don't get that plastic on glass feeling. It's much more pencil and paper feeling. The new version of the Paperlike focuses on improving clarity of the display and it does a great job at that. Because it's a matte screen protector, you get the added benefit of it cutting down on light reflections. When it isn't blistering hot outside, I love working out there. But the iPad screen isn't bright enough on its own if you're working in direct sunlight. The paper like helps cut down on that light reflection so you can work outside while still being able to see your display. Paperlike also has a few other accessories. One of my favorite is their cleaning solution. I use this every day to take all the fingerprints and smudges off my iPad display. So that way when I'm using my iPad, it's nice and clean. Before this, I had to sit there with a microfiber cloth and just scrub and scrub and scrub and that was real pain. Now I just spray and wipe. Paperlike also recently announced a new magnetic folio case, and it's extremely good, especially if you like this kind of case, like if you don't use something like the Magic Keyboard, if you like, you know, just a standalone case, this is very good for that. Paperlike sells a ton of different iPad accessories. Go check them out by using the link in the description below. Thank you so much to Paperlike for sponsoring this video. All right, Stage Manager isn't the only change to iPadOS 17. We also got customizable lock screens, just like we got on the iPhone last year. In portrait mode, the lock screen works pretty much just like the iPhone. You can change the font, color, the top widget, and there's a slot for four small widgets or two medium widgets, just that single row there. But where it differs is when you turn the iPad into landscape mode. Here you get a whole column for widgets. This column can also take advantage of a new large widget size. This displays a lot more information and with the column, you aren't having to give up a lot of space on the iPad. There are a few handy widgets that are new here as well. First, there is a shortcuts widget for triggering a shortcut. I use this to run a shortcut to play music to all of my HomePods and another to play my current podcast to all of my HomePods. Another is a large battery widget. I can see the life of all the connected accessories like my Magic Trackpad and AirPods. Of course, third-party widgets will be able to update and support lock screen widgets as well. If they already have iOS versions, they will just carry over to the iPad. I really like the landscape view of the iPad's lock screen. You can set it up to be a nice dashboard summary of your day, so that way you can check it out, but it doesn't get in the way of your wallpaper. Another new feature is animated wallpapers. So you can take your live photos and they will animate upon waking the device up. Live activities also came to the iPad along with shifting where notifications live. I'm really glad to see live activities come to the iPad. I like them a lot. I'm not sure about notifications being bunched up at the bottom of the screen though. It makes sense on the iPhone because you have a lot less space, but with the iPad, you have a big canvas. So do they really need to be shoved at the bottom? With live activities, you just get them on the lock screen since there is no dynamic island. While it's good to see live activities come to the iPad along with widgets and everything else that's customizable on the lock screen, I don't know how useful this is for the lock screen of the iPad. The iPad doesn't have an always on display and unlike the iPhone, I don't feel like I'm looking at the lock screen of the iPad very much. You know, most of the time I sit down, I, you know, wake up the device and I immediately do face ID and go to the home screen. Maybe now that the lock screen can be customizable and information can be here, that might change. 
What I do see this making a case for though, is a menu bar on the iPad. So imagine if they took live activities, control center, notification center, and the menu options that you get when you hold down the command key on the iPad that shows you all the keyboard shortcuts list, but it's broken up into you know sections just like it is on the Mac. Imagine that all in a menu bar on the iPad. I think that would be really useful. Home screen widgets got the upgrade that we have all been waiting for. They are now interactive. This means you can tap on a checkbox to mark a task as completed, hit a project to start a timer, or open a web page from Safari reading list, all without having to jump into the app. I am so happy these are here, and this will make widgets on the home screen vastly more useful. There are a few changes to system widgets that I wanna highlight really quickly. Music has three different widgets in various sizes. There's listening activities, recommendations, and top charts. Listening activities has a play button so you can just play and pause the music that you are currently listening to right from the home screen. Really handy. Recommendations are tailored to you and top charts is the most popular music at the time. Both of these have play buttons so you can start listening to the music right away without having to jump into the app. Home app now has a widget. But as of beta 2, it only comes in the small and medium size, which I find interesting. With this widget, you can toggle your HomeKit devices. You can go into the widget settings and turn off the recommended settings and set devices to be static in this widget. I did this on my iPhone so I can quickly open my garage door and change the thermostat when I'm not home. The last change is to shortcuts. Shortcuts got an XL widget. Hallelujah! Unfortunately though, I ran into a bug. Uh, currently, Shortcuts Widget Picker just disappeared. It was there for a little bit. It was there long enough for me to confirm that there is an Excel widget, and then it just disappeared and I can't get back to it. So hopefully it shows up in a later beta again, but I currently cannot show you the Excel Shortcut widget because it's not there in the Widget Picker. Spotlight is one of my favorite favorite built-in features of iPadOS. I use it all day long and it got some handy changes. App shortcuts are kind of like extensions for spotlights. You can type the name of an app like music and you will see options for data in this app. For music, you'll see stuff that's recently played. You can select this and it'll just start playing all without having to go into the app. Kind of works similarly to widgets. You can do this for apps like Photos. You can type in the name Photos and you'll see albums that you can just jump right into. Then there's apps like Shortcuts where you'll see shortcuts that run often that you can just select and they will just run right there. Third parties will be able to update to support this as well. One thing I would like to see though with app shortcuts is the ability to use the system keyboard with them. So where I see this falling down is if you have like a task manager or a calendar or a notes app or something like that, and you were to select like a new new item, a new new task, new, new event, whatever, you can't use the system keyboard just right there in Spotlight. You, you would have to jump into the app. I would love to see extensions as an idea of Spotlight get flushed out a bit more. Now, there is another issue as well. If you have two apps that are similarly named in Spotlight, uh, for example, I have Music and Music Box. This will show both of those apps in Spotlight rather than showing the app spotlights for music. In Spotlight now, there are top hits for specific settings. So you can type in features like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, airplane mode, AirPlay, passwords, and a lot more. And you can jump right into that specific section in settings. That's really handy. For settings that have toggles like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, airplane mode, you're going to be able to toggle those right from Spotlight. In the Notes app, you can now add proper rich text links or link notes together similar to how Craft or Obsidian works. You can right click or long press to bring up the context menu and select add link. In here you can type or paste a URL and then add a descriptive name to it. From there it will add the link with that name to your note. You can tap on it and then go straight to that web page. In this link menu, you can start typing and it'll show off a list of notes. You can choose to use the title of one of the notes as a link name or add your own. Once you add it, you can now jump to that specific note you just linked to. Really nice. 
To quickly link a note from a keyboard, type two greater than signs. This will bring up a list of recent notes. You can then start typing to filter that list of notes you want to use. In notes, there is a new text style. You can either select some text or just pick the new mono style text style, and this will change the font to a mono space font and then put your text in block codes. This is great for writing code snippets or writing anything you really want to stand out from the rest of your notes. Reminders, got column view support now. Here you can build out a Kanban system for projects and tasks that have multiple steps. So first go into the menu and select view as column. You can always switch back to a list view later on if you want. Go back into the menu and select add sections. Sections will be for the different steps of the task. You can add as many of these as you want. Once you have your sections set up, you can move tasks around by dragging and dropping them. PDF support got some really great updates. Now, this may not sound like the most exciting thing to happen to iPad OS, but if you work with a lot of PDFs on your iPad, this will save you a ton of time. I can pretty much guarantee that. Preview is the default PDF viewer in iPad OS, and it now has a form detection button. This uses machine learning to figure out what needs to be filled out in specific documents. If it misses something, you can actually go in and manually add a text box. I took a template from Pages and edited it. I took out all the demo data, added a signature field, and exported it as a PDF. It's literally the most basic PDF document I could possibly make. And the signature field is just underlines. It's not a specific text field or anything like that. The detection feature did a great job at figuring out exactly what needs to be filled in because autofill also got upgraded. So when it comes to filling out these text boxes, you shouldn't have to manually type out any information that's stored in your contact information. Uh, so you can just you know manually add your name or phone numbers, email addresses, addresses, and things like that. It even worked for my signature that's stored in iPadOS. What was really nice was at no point I had to open this document in a third party app. It did it all right within preview super quickly. I get a lot of PDF documents I need to fill out. And most of the time I'm either opening them from mail or from files. And when you open a PDF document in these apps now, PDFs now get their own separate window. They're no longer like trying to be embedded in the current window. So that means you can move them around, resize them, and you're not resizing your files window or your mail window or anything like that. So that's it for this video. Those are just a few of the changes I wanted to highlight in iPadOS 17. Like I mentioned, I'm gonna have my big walkthrough in the fall, so be sure to subscribe for that. Uh, every year, it's, it's a massive walkthrough. It goes over all of the changes in iPadOS. My thanks to Paperlike for sponsoring this video. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you all so much for watching and have a great day.